Good morning, dobro jutro. Uh, my name is Ferenc Czorba, I'm from the Ripen CC, and I will like to talk about RPKI. And as you can see, RPKI developments in the routing security. So, yes, I think it's easier, because then I can see my slides. So, uh, first of all, who are we? You probably know, but if you don't know, we are the RIPE NCC. I work for the RIPE NCC, and we are one of the five regional internet registries. So, we are the people who, the organization who hands out IP addresses, AS numbers, in the European, Middle Eastern, Central Asian region. Uh, what we do is we ensure unique holdership of IP addresses and AS numbers. We register the holdership in the RIPE database. And also we enable operators to document the use of their address spaces also in the RIPE database. And the whole subject of routing security, we are very involved with that since the very beginning. And you can see that, that in 1994, the first document using common language to describe routing policies has been uh, created. We developed, uh, co-developed the standards for the IRR. So if you hear IRR, Internet Routing Registry, so the RIPE database, perhaps you're more familiar with that, that's part of it. So we co-developed the standards for that and for RPKI, about which I will want to talk now. Uh, we are one of the five RPKI trust anchors, so each of the regional internet registries, like the RIPE NCC in Europe, is one of the trust anchors for RPKI. And until recently, our validator tool, so that was the tool that uh, you can use to check uh, the validness, the validity of BGP announcements. Uh, we were the only one who had such a tool uh, until recently. So the idea with RPKI, why do we have RPKI? It's a very simple question we want the answer to. Is that AS number authorized to announce that address space? That is the question. So the question is very simple. Uh, here you have the whole thing sort of on a diagram. You can see the two AS numbers and they are getting announcements perhaps from each other or for, from wherever. And they want to know, should I put this into, uh, uh, into my routing table or should I not? Can I trust this? So that's the question. So, uh, of course, if you say, can I trust, you don't always have to think of something malicious. Actually, most of the time, it's not about uh, people being uh, malicious or peeping, people want to... Uh, people want to do anything negative, it's actually accidents. So very often, most often, fat fingers, all kind of uh, accidents, like, you know, the uh, um, accident with uh, Pakistan Telecom and YouTube. So uh, those were mainly accidents. But of course, not only accidents in this year, uh, last year, we also had a famous case when it was maliciousness, maliciousness so hijacking. Uh, here you just see some statistics, how often does that happen? So you can see in 2018 we had 12,000 incidents, 4% of all the ASs uh, were involved with that. And you can see uh, 3,000, so that means 3,000 ASs were victim of it and 1,000 ASs actually caused such incidents. So. The solution, of course, what you are probably familiar with is the Internet Routing Registry, the RIPE database. If you have uh, perhaps your ISP uh, updates their filters automatically from what's in the RIPE database, what's in the Internet Routing Registry. So uh, the Internet Routing Registry is a distributed set of databases. One of them is the RIPE database. For example, another example should be, uh, can be RADB's database and so on, at least about 30 of them. So what the Internet Routing Registry, the RIPE database, uh, helps you with is the, verification, uh, is the verification of the holdership over resources. So uh, 
you can see the right database is mainly for our region, the European and the regions allow, uh, around it. And because we hand out these resources, the RIPEN CC hands out IP addresses and AS numbers, we do know who holds which, IS, which IP address and which AS number. So that's quite clear. RADB, of course, they don't ha uh, hand out any resources, so they have to verify it. Here you can see that they allow paying customers to create objects. And many of the databases in the Internet Routing Registry actually don't verify it. So here you can see the accuracy of the RIPE database uh, for different regions in the world. And of course, the greener it is, the more accurate it is from zero to 100%. It's the percentage of valid announcements over covered an announcements, yeah? So how many of the root objects you could say is actually valid and actually reflects the real life situation? So that's for the RIPE database, and you can see for the European region it's quite good, for other regions it's not very good, but that is not also our job there for those regions, so that's actually okay. And here you can see the accuracy of the RADB uh, uh, database and the routing registry, you can see it's quite different with which regions are more accurate. Anyway, so as you can see, uh, the solution with the Internet Routing Registry for routing security is not really 100%, and that's where RPKI comes into the picture. That's where RPKI comes into the picture. So what is RPKI? You can see it's resource. Resource means IP address in this case public key infrastructure, it ties the IP addresses, it ties them and the AS numbers to public keys, and it follows the hierarchy of the registry. The registry, RIPE and CC, for example, uh, hands out address ranges to members, LIRs. Yeah, this keeps disappearing. <laughs> um, so, uh, what happens is there is a chain of trust in RPKI, we are going to see that in a moment, and uh, it follows this hierarchy. And the whole point of RPKI is really just one thing, so that uh, you can create a certificate for your address space, and then from that certificate you can create something called ROA. If you're familiar with the right database, then the ROA is a bit like a root object. It does more or less the same kind of thing, very broadly as a concept. So what the ROA does, it's an uh, authorized, and that's the important thing, so there's RP PKI chain of trust from the trust anchor RIPE and CC all the way to the point where you create a ROA and in the ROA you say this AS number is authorized to announce this address space of mine. Yeah? So that's a ROA and uh, it is signed, so cryptographically signed, so that's the point of RPKI. So how long has it been around? You can see it's been around already for 11 years, and all the regional, five regional internet registries are operating it. It's community-driven driv uh, standardization, I IETF, uh, because the routing registry, because the RIPE database was not sufficient, and that's why we came up with the RPKI. PKI, and so it's add uh, crypto security to uh, IP addresses, AS numbers. And this is the concept. So the most important part of this diagram is the dotted line in the middle, okay? To understand the concept, what happens is you get a certificate, if you want, you don't have to, from the RIPE and CC. From that certificate with your keys, what you can do is you can create a ROA saying which of your prefixes can be announced by which AS number. Yeah? So that is the uh, ROA you create on the left-hand side. And that's the end of the story for you. Now, someone else, and you could call that the validating party, wants to know if they can trust your announcement. And so they are going to make use of this, what you created. So what they do is they validate, they download uh, software, 
which is called the validator. And uh, from with the validator, what they do is they can validate all these rows everyone has created, uh, like for all the different on all the different continents for all the different. Uh, uh, so all the rows, and from that they prepare a validated cache. So in their cache, in the validator, they're only going to have the rows that are valid. And this is directly then linked to your router, because uh, most routers actually have this already integrated, and then you can make routing uh, decisions based on that. So you get the information, this prefix announced by that AS, yes, that's valid, based on this RPK chain of trust, so you know you can trust it. And then it's completely up to you, the decision you make. Sometimes people misunderstand it and they think someone else is uh, pushing decisions on them. No, you have this information and you do what you want with it. Either you ignore it, or if you say it's validated, then you give more preference to it. Or if it's invalid, you give less preference or you don't accept it. It's completely up to you what you do with it. It's just information there. So no one is actually pushing you to do anything. You have an extra information to be more secure about it and you can do whatever you want with it. So that's the concept. And here you can see that one more time again. Uh, at the top, that's the Ripen CC. So we are the trust anchor. Uh, we have all the resources and we are the certificate authority and if you want you can get your certificate that's in blue and from your certificate for all your address space you can create raw the any way you want it you can choose whichever of your prefixes and you can put in any as number saying i allow that AS number to announce my prefix and I sign it and then that all that information is on the ripe CC's platform so it's very simple I'll talk about that perhaps later you don't really have to do anything with keys it's like just like two or three uh, clicks of a mouse really yeah okay so this is the structure and what is a ROA? So if you create a ROA, it has three pieces of information. It says this range of addresses, that's the address space, the prefix, the originating AS is originated from that AS, and then the extra information is the maximum length. So let's say if you have a slash 21, you can specify maximum length is is just default, then only announcements that are size of a slash 21 are valid. A slash 22 is not valid. But if you make the maximum length longer, you can say the maximum length is slash 24, then anything between the sizes of slash 21, which is your uh, address range, and slash uh, 24 would be valid. So you have to choose that as well. And you can create one or many ROAs. So someone just asked me, what happens if I have an assignment? We can create a separate ROA with separate AS number for your assignment of your customer. So it's whatever you can do with routing, you can do with RPKI ROAs. Yeah, so you can uh, completely mirror the situation. So as I said, this is the important part, the dotted line. Until now, you set up a, a, a certificate, you create the certificate, you create a raw, and now someone else is going to use it to validate announcements. And that is how it works. You have the five trust anchors. Those are the five regional internet registries. You need a validator, so you could even, for example, just download it on your laptop, but it's obviously you're going to have a machine in your network, a validator, and the validator will get all the information, all the certificates and the ROAs, and then create a validated cache. So it will check using this RPKI chain of trust, it will check the, the validity of all the ROAs and only the valid ROAs it will put in the cache and after that, that is then communicated, I don't know, in, in uh, uh, whatever periods with the uh, router and then the, so the router doesn't have to do the validation, it doesn't slow it down and then the router can 
uh, compare it with the announcement to see if they are valid or not. So here you can see on the left-hand side you have the U as a user, you have the validated cache that you created with your validator, and then there you have your router, and there you have the BGP announcements, and then you can compare the two and then make whatever decision. But as I said, the decision is yours. You then can configure your router and say, if valid, then do this or don't do this or whatever you want to do, yeah? So this is now the full system. At the top, you have the ROAS the, in the repository, which is on the RIPE-NCC's platform. Then you, the validating party, has the validator, the validator software. In the validator will create the validated cache, only those ROAS that are valid, that says which prefix is announced by which AS and which are valid. It has checked it. And after that, you can see the protocol is R RPKI, RTR, R. that's the protocol between the validator and your router. And most platforms, most routers actually have this already built in, so they understand this. And then the routers can make whichever decision based on that. Okay, a little bit of statistics. So you can see here for the five regions that, of course, RIPE-NCC has the most certificates. So a certificate, you only have one certificate, and in your certificate you have all your different prefixes together, IPv4, IPv6, and then you create RAW for each prefix separately. Yeah? So these are the number of certificates, and we have just passed actually 10,000 a few days ago. So you have in total, if you add this all up, you can see there are 30,000 uh, certificates. And you can see the coverage. So you can see in which regions in the world, how many, uh, what percentage of the announcements actually have ROAS, has actually created ROAS for which announcements. And you can see, of course, for example, in Europe, it's quite high. It's between zero and 100%. And then, here you have the accuracy. So that means from the ROAS that are created, what percentage actually completely reflects what is actually being announced in real life. That's the accuracy. And you can see that again between zero and 100%. And here you have some statistics for the region. So you can see that 66% of the addresses actually in Serbia already have ROAS. So based on RP, in RPKI, 66% have created ROAS for their address ranges in the Republic of Serbia. And then you can see all the other countries there, and you can see the accuracies. From these ROAS that they created, what percentage is accurate? And you can see the accuracy is really high. So there aren't a lot of mistakes, let's say, let's put it that way, or malicious, yeah. But that, hopefully, that you can't create. Okay. Um, right. So what should you do? Uh, create your ROAS in the LIR portal. Perhaps what I should tell you just very briefly, what does it mean if you want to do this? This is very simple. If you are an LIR, you go into your LIR portal and you there you can just click a button, I want a certificate. So it's your choice. If you want a certificate, you get a certificate, and then you can create ROAS. The interface is very easy, because the only thing you, you, will, you will see all your announcements. We have that from root collectors, so we collect it from the internet. You see your actual announcements, not what's in the database, but the real life. And based on that, you can, for each of your announcements, you can create a ROA, yeah? And it's just a click of a mouse, so you don't have to worry about you have logged in any kind of authentication keys that's done automatically. And so you create your ROAS in the LIR portal. The important thing is to pay the, the main problem can be the maximum length. So if you create a ROA for your announcement and you just say default maximum length, 
and your announcement, your prefix is a slash 21, then if you want to announce a slash 22, that will be invalid. If you know you want to do it, then you have to change the maximum length when you create the raw or later and change it from default to slash 22 or slash 23 or slash 24. Also, as I said, if part of your allocation belongs to your customer and they are announcing it from a different AS, then you can create separate ROAs for the rest of your allocation from your AS and you can create a separate ROA for your customer with a different AS, yeah? So you can do whatever you need to do. So create your ROAs, make sure you get the maximum length attribute correctly that's the first part. So now you have done so that others can use RPKI to validate your announcements. Your job is finished here. I mean, okay, you check it occasionally if it's up to date and all that. After that, you can also use RPKI to check the validity of what other people announce. And that you start by downloading the validator. You check, you can also check the validator status. And if, for example, your uh, grandfather is announcing a prefix and it's not valid but you like your grandfather you can add you can update it manually so you can make exceptions to it so you have that freedom as well to add and remove ROAS from the validated cache and after that set up monitoring and that's it now, the question is, what happens if you say, okay, I do RPKI and I did it and then I also do the validation and then so I integrate it in my um, routing. So basically what I do is I, my router and the validator, they are going to check if uh, an announced prefix is valid. And you say, I'm going to reject anything that's invalid. You're not going to reject anything that's unknown. Unknown just means that they didn't do RPKI. They didn't create ROAS. So that's not a problem. But if you, say, if you see from RPKI that there's a ROA that says this prefix can be announced by them and someone else is announcing it, and what happens if your router now, based on this, uh, rejects the prefix? And this is what we found out what people's experience is, what you see on that slide, what happens. So the, to summarize it, it's not a big problem. So, uh, so, for example, someone created a bad ROA by mistake and now you reject it because they made a mistake. What's, uh, how negatively will it uh, impact you because you reject actually something that they wanted uh, valid? So. Basically, you, uh, you see mostly nothing. That's what AT&T said. Um, uh, five customer calls in six months to give a feeling all resolved uh, quickly. Dutch ISP. Customers appreciate that you take security really seriously, so you uh, use RPKI. There are many invalid, but usually it in packs very little traffic because usually the major players will know what they are doing. So that's, uh, uh, that's the feedback on that. So that's it, really. The question is, do you want to use it? Do you find this is useful? That's up to you, but we, sug we suggest you do. Questions? Yes. Is the validator open source? Um, I don't think it is. I'd have to check that. Yeah. Security practice. Mm, mm. Um, I don't know. I have to check that. Yeah. No, no, it's not. Uh, what basically uh, about security, I mean, the easiest way to say if you are worried about security, it's more like an indication. I can't go into the depth because it's not me who developed it. But what I can say, uh, major uh, first tier ISPs are, are using it and they haven't had any incidents until now. Okay.